Casio Sapphire. Rings a bell, doesn't it? If you've followed this channel for a while, you may remember the mysterious Casio Sapphire watch that I featured in at least a couple of videos. That watch was fantastic value for money and felt like the king of low-cost fashion watches. I even gave it the title of Daniel Wellington Killer given its minimalist aesthetic. Unfortunately, Casio decided to discontinue that model at some point in 2019 and it's now been dropped from most retailers. It was essentially done and dusted. So when recently browsing Amazon, I was stunned to see that Casio Sapphire logo reappear on a different analog watch. Not only was the logo there, but the same positive sentiment was too. One reviewer went so far as to call it the best £50 watch you can buy. Do you really think I could resist? I've been trying this watch for the last couple of weeks and it's time to give you the inside scoop on whether the watch lives up to the hype or if it's just a swing and a miss from Casio. Currently, this retails for a very competitive £50 to £60 on Amazon UK, which I'll link to in the video description if you want to check it out. As with a couple of recent videos, they've covered the cost of this watch, which is why I'm pointing you in their direction. This watch doesn't seem to be quite so accessible in the US, unfortunately. If it does become available, I'd imagine it would probably be slightly better value for money than in the UK. You guys seem to get things a lot cheaper. You'll notice straight away, aesthetically, it takes a rather different approach to the old Casio Sapphire that I'm familiar with. This MTS 100 has a slightly sporty look to it with the traditional dial that reminds me of some Seiko models. Size-wise, you're looking at a fairly standard 40mm diameter, excluding the crown, paired with a 46.9mm lug-to-lug -lug length. When combined with the 9.3mm thickness, it feels great on wrist and I think overall, the watch has a set of crowd-pleasing dimensions. I have skinny 6.25 inch wrists and the watch looks a tiny bit on the large side, but it's certainly still wearable. For a more average wrist, say 7, 7.25 seven inches, this is going to look spot on. Unlike some of the similarly priced Timex models, which incorporate brass in their construction, this case is made fully of stainless steel. It features a glossy finish across the majority of the surface, including the bezel and lugs, though the case edges aren't as sharp or defined as more premium watches, which is a sacrifice to expect at this low price point. Nevertheless, you'd only notice if you were looking closely, and I still like the overall shape that this provides. The crown even features some added protection in the form of guards to shelter it from impacts and to give a more sporty look. Wow, does that dial look good, for a 50 quid watch especially. If I was a watch newbie and you handed me this, the dial alone would give me the impression that this watch was worth at least double, possibly triple the current retail price. This particular variant features a black dial with a subtle matte ring that passes behind the hour markers. In most lighting conditions, this is far less visible than the poor product images suggest and I think it looks much better in person as it seems to disappear into the darkness at certain angles. If this dark colorway isn't for you, they also manufacture this in blue and silver, the latter of which includes a stainless steel bracelet too. We'll talk about this leather strap option a little bit later. Tiny second indicators inhabit the circumference and a white date window sits at the three o'clock position. Despite the dark dial, this one doesn't stand out nearly as much as you might expect from the images. I think the thin white border and the black inner make it feel a little smaller for some reason. And as such, it sits there very nicely and doesn't stick out. It features applied hour indices, which include a sliver of loom down the center. The 12 o'clock has a typical double width marker, while the three, six and nine o'clock markers are also slightly thicker than those which occupy the rest of the chapter ring. This is impressive for such a cheap watch, and while the luminescence isn't the brightest, it's a nice to have bonus anyway. They match the Dorfian handset perfectly, which are themselves very neatly done and feature long strips of loom down the middle. Impressively, the second hand hits every single second marker as it ticks along, showing the quartz movement within is precisely aligned and at least fairly consistent. We've reviewed a few much more expensive watches than this, and I have to say a lot of them are still very hit and miss when it comes to that. It's nice to see that Casio have clutched up, at least with this unit. I can't promise that yours will be quite so precise, but generally my experience with Casio has been better than most in the industry. The movement in question is the Caliber 2719. Unfortunately, I've struggled to find any decent information about this movement as Casio likes to keep things very secretive, although it does seem to be present in many of the popular and more expensive edifice watches also produced by the brand. Overall, the movement's pretty quiet, but you can certainly hear it when you put it up to your ear. So this should give you no problems if you were just looking to leave it by your bedside at night. 
As the dial indicates, the battery within the movement has an advertised 10 year lifespan, which is very impressive and means you won't have to mess around removing the rear. Maybe the time this battery runs out, the pandemic will be over. The snapback rear is also stainless steel and provides a reasonable 5 ATM of water resistance, which is enough for short term submersion. That's nothing spectacular, but it's good for a 50 pound watch that isn't attempting to be a diver. While still only having average grip, the crown is tremendously responsive and it's easy to make minor alterations if needed. Another of the key selling points is positioned front and center. Of course, it's the sapphire crystal. So many fashion watch brands claim to be offering industry leading value, yet still choose to put cheap mineral glass on 150 to 200 pound quartz watches. With this MTS 100L, Casio isn't pulling any punches and they're giving you what's often considered the best material in the business. This crystal will be fundamentally scratch proof, which can keep your watch looking new for longer. Over the last few years, we've seen a huge influx of Chinese brand watches that are really rewriting what's to be expected from a lower end watch. Therefore, it's nice to see Casio somewhat moving with the times and implementing Sapphire on some of these budget pieces. Unfortunately, the only area that lets down the watch is the strap. It features a black crocodile pattern and is constructed of genuine leather. It doesn't look bad, but as you might expect, it's not great quality. Considering the retail price, it's hard to criticize it, though you'll notice it feels plasticky and overly firm at first. This 20 millimeter strap also lacks the quick release tabs that are present on rival offerings, which is a shame. Nevertheless, I guess it's still wearable and the stainless steel buckle doesn't feel like it's going to break anytime soon. On reflection, I think the overall value proposition is just as good as that Casio Sapphire that I reviewed last year. This watch looks great on wrist and at the current retail price, it makes for a great everyday choice that will suit both casual outfits as well as some more formal ones with this black version at least. I often hear people say, oh, just get a Seiko 5 if you're after a low cost watch. And while I agree they are good watches, not everyone wants a mechanical watch. At the lower price points, they tend to be more expensive, they tend to be chunkier, and often those models have worse water performance. Also, many of the budget friendly mechanical watches are far more expensive in the UK than across the pond, so we tend to have fewer options, and something like this is often hovering around half the price of most Seiko 5 models, which I think is a fairly substantial difference. Therefore, at such a low price, with the benefits of solid glass, water resistance and looks, I think this fits the bill for a lot of people. Is it the best £50 watch out there though? Well, personally, I think it's up there, but I've now got my eyes on another Casio watch that I recently saw drop in price. That one is part of the Edifice line, so we'll have to see how that one stacks up against this first. Either way, I don't think you can really go wrong with this. It's got a couple of little quirks like the 10 year battery claim being printed on the front of the dial. I would have preferred it maybe on the rear, but I'm under no doubts that this could serve you very well indeed. I'll have it linked in the video description if you want to check it out. In the last review video, we covered the Skagen Anchor. Here's where it ended up on our cool wall. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this budget Casio. Is this watch complete and utter lie? It's a lie. Uncool, cool or ice cold. Make sure to cast your vote in the comment section down below as well as any extra comments you've got. Unfortunately, YouTube has discontinued the poll iCard feature, which is really frustrating. So your comments are more important than ever. Consider subscribing to stay tuned for more future reviews. I'll see you in the next one.